Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to try it again. Good morning. Good morning. How you feel? Wonderful. Charles, yes. happy anniversary. Because I knew you when. <laughs> I want to thank you for the invitation. I'm bringing you specific greetings from the Reverend Dr. Derek B. Wells, who is the senior minister at CUT, and Reverend Dr. Helen Carey said to be sure and tell you hello and that she loves you. And if she had known I was coming soon enough, she would have come with me. Last week, Reverend Charles said the focus this month would be based on three words, greatness, dreams, purpose. Greatness is your God-given potential, right? Yes. Dreams are express potential. And purpose is the basis of your dreams. My question to you is, have you discovered your purpose, your unique purpose, have you spent any time this week working toward your purpose? Don't answer out loud, because I don't want to make you tell a story. <laughs> are you living on purpose, or are you just floating by? Right. He also told you that there were three requirements that you must have a spiritual practice, yeah. right? To listen to spirit. So. I guess I would ask, do you pray other than when you come to church? All right. All right. Huh? Or other than when you run into a problem? Because you should be praying when things are going well. He said you had to be willing to be of service with your gifts. I want to say this correctly. There are some people, not anybody in this room, <laughs> who are stingy with their gifts. Right. right? God has given you the gift to express and to share. But some of us learn how to do something and we don't want to share it with anybody. And not realizing you're cutting off your own good. Today, my topic is have faith in your dreams. And, and I want to share this with you. I found this cartoon, and it's a picture of people on the plane. You know, I've had some experience with the planes. <laughs> okay. Welcome aboard, anointed airlines. Pastors, what say we begin by testing your faith right away? Please join us in celebrating our captain's birthday. She's 104 today. <laughs> <laughs> Truly a test of faith. I got another story for you. A nun who works for a home health care agency was out making her rounds when she ran out of gas. As luck would have it, there was a station just down the street. She walked to the station to borrow a can with enough gas to start the car and drive back to the station to get a fill up. The attendant regretfully told her that the only can he owned had just been loaned out, but if she would care to wait, he was sure it would come back shortly. Since the nun was on the way to see a patient, she decided not to wait, walked back to her car. After looking through her car for something to carry the, to the station to get some gas, she spotted a bedpan that she was taking to the patient. <laughs> Always resourceful, she carried it to the station, filled it up with gas, and carried it back to her car. As she was pouring the gas into the tank of her car, two men walked by. One of them turned to the other one and said, now that's what I call faith. Because <laughs> he's looking at the outer, right? We all have a tendency to look at the outer. 
But there's more going on on the inside. So now let's talk about faith and dreams. What's the connection? Faith functions as a noun and a verb. Okay? Right? It's the perceiving power of the mind linked with the power to do what? Shape substance. Okay, I want to make sure there's some students in here. Faith is also spiritual assurance. The power to do the seeming impossible. As an action word, it's that magnetic power that draws your heart's desire from invisible substance. It's a deep knowing that what you are seeking is already yours. You believe that? Yeah. Uh -huh. Conscious development of your faith faculty is the key to spiritual realization. Faith is more than just a belief. It's the substance of that which is believed. So if I take you to Hebrews 11.1, 1, you know that scripture. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Substance is that which stands under, right? Evidence is the proof. It's the manifestation. I don't have to see how it's coming. I just got to know that it's already here. And that I'm calling it into manifestation so that I can see it for myself, right? Okay. Faith working in spiritual substance accomplishes all things. There are two kinds of faith, though. You got blind faith and you got understanding faith. Blind faith you got to trust in, in a higher power, but however, you are not working with principle. So every now and then you hit on the right thing. But other times there's disappointment and discouragement. But when you're working with understanding faith, faith that functions from principle, based on the knowledge of truth, okay, understanding the law of mind action, you always know the outcome. So as a truth student, I should never, ever hear any of you say, I don't know what's going to happen. Right? Because right? if you're working from principle and you're working from understanding faith, you know what's going to happen. You know what the outcome is going to be every time. Okay? So now, we got dreams. And I'm not talking about the dreams that you can't remember when you wake up in the morning. Okay? okay? A dream is a fond hope or aspiration. A dream is to imagine something being possible, is, is to realize the aspiration in your soul before it's made manifest. A dream can put before you a challenge, however, a challenge to your faith, a challenge to your belief system. Do you believe? Oh, yeah, everybody's going to say yes. But do you really believe? When was the last time you had a doubt in your mind? Okay, if that doubt was there, you don't believe. See, the belief is not something you come in and out of. That's what we've been doing. Okay? We're supposed to become so entrenched in our belief system that there is never a doubt that there's never a worry, that there's never a fear. I'm still working on it. Okay. Okay. You see, the scripture talks about this because the disciples asked Jesus, how come we couldn't heal him? How come we didn't? He said, because of your little faith. Right? Little faith. And he also told them that they needed to do some fasting and praying. Okay? When we talk about fasting as metaphysicians, it's fasting from the negative, right? Right? We're not talking about getting some water and some juice and some lemon and all of that and walking around looking sick because <laughs> you're hungry. Right? Well, I'm not talking about that kind of fasting, but it's to eliminate the negative things from your awareness. Okay? His response shows us that when our belief is lifted and spiritualized to the level of faith, 
nothing is impossible to us. Now, in Mark 9, verse 23, it says, if you can believe, all things are possible to those who believe. All things are possible to those who believe. So if all things are possible and you say you believe, then everybody in here should be expressing their dream right now. Huh? Uh-huh. Okay. Do you have a dream? Maybe that's the question I should have asked before. Do you even have a dream? Because, you know, people come to church and they sit there and they expect the preacher to give them everything. You know, it's like opening up your head and pouring it in and it's supposed to make it all right. It doesn't work that way. The preacher can share, but you have to do your own work. Right? Some folks, not anybody in here, but some folks are lazy. Right? You don't want to do the work. We mean work. Right? I didn't come to church to work. I came to church to get fed. But it takes work to chew up and internalize what you're being fed. Right. Huh? Right. Huh? Is your dream worthy of you? After all, you're an heir. You're a child of God. So your dream's got to be worthy, right? Okay. Is it worthy of you? Reverend Charles told you to dream on purpose. Right? Deliberately. 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 Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not haphazardly. Deliberately. There are some examples in the Bible of faith-driven folks. And I went to Hebrews again. Because in Hebrews, it talks about the folks in the Bible right. who were driven by faith. Yeah. You see, Enoch was translated and didn't see death because he pleased God. Are you doing anything to please God? When you wake up in the morning, are you pleasing God? Do you say, thank you, God, for a brand new day? Or do you wake up and say, oh, it's Monday. I got to go to work. Instead of saying, thank you, God, that I got some work to go to. Okay. Right? 11.6 says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Because okay? first you've got to believe that God is. That's right. And I would venture to say that you know somebody who does not really believe that there's a God. Right? But you, you, it's your responsibility to believe that there is a God. That God is, okay? And that as you s diligently seek you, God, he rewards you. Then we had Noah. By faith, Noah built the ark. Now, picture in your mind, in today's time, somebody starting to build an ark. Hmm? Out there on the parking lot. And they, and they tell you, well, God told me to do this. I would venture to say that your reaction is going to be like some of the reactions of the people in the Bible. What do you think you're doing? Have you lost your mind? Somebody's going to say, look, this is private property. Take this thing off of this property and go build your ark someplace else. Right? But let's think about an ark. It's a holy place. It's a sanctuary. It's the Christ center within where you are one with pure being. Okay, that's ark. Noah's ark symbolizes a spiritual part of oneself built in the midst of the flood of errors. Uh-huh. You ever find yourself caught up in the midst of some stuff? Some mess? There you are in the middle of it. Not participating, but there you are, you see it. And then you name it. And when you name it, you know what you're doing. Now you claimed it, right? 
You need to establish in your mind an ark. Right? One of the first things I learned in Lessons in Truth was that I can see what is going on. I don't have to participate in what is going on. I don't have to internalize what is going on. I can keep it outside of me. And if I keep it outside of me, it does not affect me. But the minute I start to dip with it, I get in trouble. And the situation gets too big for me to handle, okay? Noah's Ark symbolizes the spiritual part of oneself built in the midst of this flood of errors. So you can do this at any time, right? Just like you can look at that person who used to work your nerves. Notice I said used to, because now you don't allow that to occur, right? Because you look at that person and you look for the good. And if you don't see the good right away, you ask God, God, show me some good. Right? Please, God, show me some good because I don't want to go there. Show me some good. Okay? And sometimes it's just what they have on. Oh, I love that outfit you have on. I like your earrings because if I'm talking about something that I like, I can't be thinking about something that I don't like. Can't do both of them at the same time. Okay? So I have that ability to build that ark at any time. Okay? I don't have to wait for the weatherman to say it's going to rain. Okay? The ark represents a positive saving state of consciousness, which agrees with or forms a covenant with the principle of being. You see, we have this covenant. God made a covenant with us. Because God said, I will never leave or forsake you. Okay? I will never leave or forsake you. The covenant is already there. The promise is already there. We need to remember the promise. You're not in a situation alone. No, I got to deal with this myself. No, you don't. You got God. Right? What better help can you ask for? Because you're going to ask your buddy, they can't help you. Half the time, they look at caller ID and they ain't going to answer the phone. <laughs> right? Because they've heard the story over and over and over again, and they're tired of hearing it. Okay? But you got God. Okay? In that middle of that flood of error, you got God. In the flood of negativity, you got God. Okay? And any kind of flood you can come up with, any kind of situation, whether it's on a job, whether it's at home, wherever it is, you got God. God is there. Remember this, and then you can rest and let go and let God. They tell us in class all the time, let go and let God. But they don't say how to let go and let God. Right? I got this thing in my face, and you telling me to let go? I've got somebody demanding a solution to a situation, and you saying, let go? Mm -hmm. If I can let go of it and get out of the way, God can then direct me and take care of it, right? <laughs> then there was Abraham. By faith, Abraham left his home, right? And didn't know where he was going. There's not a day you walk out of your door, you don't know where you're going, right? You might not get there because you may detour and go somewhere else, but you know where you're going, okay? He didn't know where he was going, but he was trusting in God because God said, look, look up, north, south, east, and west. Whatever you see, I give it to you. What do you see? Do you see your dream? If you see it, you can have it. God's already promised it to you. Okay? Now, we know Abraham had some issues. He, he, had, he had a couple issues in this journey that he was taking with his wife. Because, see, then he was Abram and she was Sarai. And, and they had these issues and they went through this one ruler's land. And Abram, Abram got 
kind of scared because he thought that the man was going to take his wife and kill him. So he said, that's my sister. Okay. Even though he's the father of nations, he still had some issues. Okay. We have issues and it doesn't keep us from being what God intended us to be. Got it? Okay. And when the, when the ruler found out, wait a minute, something's not right here. God said, that ain't his sister, that's his wife, get her out of here. Make sense? And he got him out. He said, Abraham, what you trying to do to me? Right? But Abraham did this. He followed God's instructions and left his home. By faith, Sarah conceived. When they said she was too old. Okay. I will say it anyway. It just came to my mind. I hope ain't no old Sarahs in here. <laughs> my name ain't Sarah. I ain't looking for no babies. <laughs> okay. But there was a reason and a need and a lesson, right? By faith, Abraham was willing to offer up Isaac as a sacrifice. Are you willing to offer up your dearest, whatever that possession is, are you willing to give it up? Hmm? Don't, 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 don't say nothing, because I know that all of you who nod mm -hmm, are not telling the truth. Because if I asked you what your dearest possession was and you had it there in your hand and I come to take it from you, you would be stepping back and ready to act unchristian like. Right? But God had a lamb in the bush. Right? There's always a lamb in the bush. Right? Always. Okay? What are you willing to give for your dream? Hmm? Faith in God's promises requires prayer time and meditation. I'm going to ask you again, how often do you pray when you're not at church? I'm not even going to ask you about meditating. Because some of you think it's, um, <laughs> it's more than that. It's getting quiet. Because see, prayer, you're talking to God. At some point, you need to stop talking and listen. Okay? And so as you are meditating, you are contemplating, you're thinking on an aspect of God that you need to think on. You don't take problems into meditation. Okay? If you got an issue with somebody, you don't take that into meditation. You got to take some love into meditation, and you got to think about God as love. God's love for you is unconditional. There are no strings attached. God just loves us. God loves us in spite of us. No matter what we've done in the past, God still loves us. Right? So that's what meditating is about. Because then as you contemplate God, you move into that point called the silence, where you recognize that you and God are one. Right? There are no issues. There are no problems. It's just you and God. By faith, if we look at Moses, he was hid for three months, right? Because they had sent out a decree that all these little boy babies had to be killed. Okay? And then by faith, he ended up with the Pharaoh's daughter and in the house of the Pharaoh living large. Okay? He had an issue too. He saw them mistreating an Israelite. And his temper got the best of him. And he killed a soldier. Thou shalt not kill. Hmm. When's the last time you killed? Uh-huh. When's the last time you cut somebody? Verbally. Verbally. Uh -huh. When was the last time you hurt somebody's feelings? That's killing. You've killed a part of their spirit because they weren't expecting that from you because you are a metaphysician. 
Right? But he got out of Egypt, and by faith he moved. And then he listened to God. (laughs) And he ended up leading the Israelites out of Egypt. Now, in honor of Charles, leading folks is more than a notion. Right? Right? I love you. I love all of you. But you don't make it easy for your minister to lead you. Because everybody got their own idea of how things should go. Now, I want him to do it this way. Now, all he's got to do it my way. Come on now. He's got to do it God's way. Okay? As they're moving through out of Egypt, they're led by a clouded day and a fire at night, and they got food to eat, right? And they were told, don't be saving it, because there's always enough sufficient to the day, right? And when somebody saved some, it was rotten, and they couldn't eat it anyway, right? Then they encountered the Red Sea. But by faith, they crossed that Red Sea. You got a Red Sea blocking your dream. If you got a Red Sea blocking your dream, you got to go back and check your faith out. Because with faith, you can walk right on through that Red Sea. Because it will part for you. Because God's going to part it. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell, fell and they claimed the land. What kind of walls have you erected in your life? You got any doubt? Fear? Unforgiveness? Anger? Now, I already talked about doubt. You should have no doubts, right? Okay. And if you trust God, there should be nothing for you to fear because they told me somewhere there's nothing in all the world for me to fear because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So there's no reason to be afraid, right? Unforgiveness is a biggie because some folks feel justified in being angry and not forgiving something that somebody else did. But let me tell you about what they did. They did what they did based on the information you gave them. Hello? People function and respond to you based on you and how you are. The energies and whatever you sending out, that's what they respond to. Finds agreement in them, and that's what they react to. So you set it up. Mm. Mm Mm-hmm. You have a disagreement with somebody, it's still your fault. You know why? Because I'm willing to bet, and I'm not a gambling woman, that you didn't give them enough information. You didn't ask for additional information. So therefore, they couldn't deal, they could only deal with what you gave them. Y'all got quiet, but that's okay. So I've got to be willing to forgive. In Lessons in Truth, you learn to give love for what appears to be hate, right? And if you don't remember, go back and take the class again. Taking it once is not enough, especially if you had it back 35 years ago when I taught it, okay? You need to take it again. You need a refresher course, okay? Tear down these walls. Get rid of that wall of anger. You know, when we cop an attitude, I could cop an attitude. (laughs) Big time. I had it down to a science. (laughs) But I discovered that the attitude was not beneficial, okay? It didn't help me get what I was trying to get. So I had to change my attitude 
change my thoughts and feelings so I could change my consciousness and change these experiences, right? So you angry with somebody, what good is it doing you? They aren't paying you any attention. They've gone on about their business. They're living their life, right? And you walking around with an attitude. Tear down the walls. Get rid of the walls. By faith, there are examples in the Bible of battles won, mouths of lions being shut, the fire in the furnace didn't burn the Hebrew boys. By faith, Samson regained his strength. By faith, children were brought back to life. By faith, the blind could see, the deaf could hear, the dumb could talk. By faith, Paul could sing a new song in prison. By faith in God, Jesus could forgive from the cross. So what's your story? What's your story? Floods of error, thoughts, Red Sea experiences. Find yourself in a strange land, an uncomfortable state of consciousness. Conceived a dream, but it won't it won't come because you don't want to do the labor for its birth. Huh? Refusing to give your dream the attention that it needs. Doubting the validity of God's promises. Forgetting that the dream itself came from God. The floods, the Red Sea, the walls, being in a strange land, that's all created by you, by your thoughts and feelings change your thoughts and feelings and you change your life they tell you that in every class you take they tell you that from the pulpit when are you going to do it hmm? everything in your life started as a thought in your mind hmm? when you change your thoughts and feelings you change your life recognize the faith and dream connection and make the necessary changes and start to experience your dream. God bless you.